Hi folks, thanks for coming to this uh, user groups meeting um, for iAnalyze Racing. We're going to be covering the, the new features of the program and, and on the website since we just released uh, version 1.2, uh, which has a lot of neat things, I think, uh, from team features to some new reports and some different uh, uh, graphing capabilities that we hadn't had previously. Uh, so we're going to kind of jump right into it, I guess. Uh, one thing I'd like you to do is, uh, because we don't have too many folks here today, um, being able to, uh, we just have uh, Brian Lamb and Steve, we, we've got you as well, um, we'll be able to uh, um, take all of your questions and really cover what's of, of interest to you and, and maybe have some more in-depth discussions as well. Um, but first first thing I'd like to do is we also have Brady Groves with us here today and Brady's a, a new addition to the iAnalyze Racing team. He is uh, our, he's, he's in charge of doing our social media stuff. So Brady, you want to introduce yourself and let everybody know what you're doing? Yeah, you pretty much covered it. Um, my name is Brady. I've been handling kind of getting our feet wet feet wet with Facebook, Twitter, uh, a little Reddit, and eventually I think we'll move into some other stuff. Um, I also did some work on the website, did some copywriting for that, and that kind of transitioned into the social media stuff. So um, we're just getting our feet wet on that side of things, but um, I think me and Doug are both pretty excited to add it to the, to the iRacing team. Yeah, it, 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 it's nice to have to be a company of more than just one now. I'll tell you that for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, and, and I'm actually looking to, to, to Brady eventually, I think, is going to start taking over all of the sponsorship roles and, and working out deals with all the different series and the different teams and such uh, so that we can have a, 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 a decent presence out there. Um, so that Yeah, I think the um, you, Doug works so hard on the product, and the product is getting to the point where it's so refined um, making a big push marketing wise is going to make a huge difference and I think you guys are the early adapters I think we've really got something here that's gonna gonna catch fire yeah well I'm hoping so it's a lot of fun anyway and I and certainly we appreciate you guys using it and and always want to get your feedback as well you know anything that you need you know talk to Brady or me and, and just let them get the feedback to us because we really want to make the you know it, it the, the this tool the way I kind of when we were down at the iRacing seminar down in Texas there uh, the way I put it was the uh, you know this the iRacing the product uh, I analyze racing is my product, but it's your tool, and so I have to make it useful for you guys. Because if it's not useful, it's not going to be. You know, what's the point of it? And you know, I think we're. I think we make. We've made leaps and bounds, strides, um, and 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 it's head and shoulders above what else out there for a lot of things. But there's always there's always room for improvement and and, and adding things in. So really, would like to get your uh, um, feedback with regards to that. And, and so with that, I guess we're going to get started with taking a look at things. Uh, one of the first things that thing, as Brady alluded to, is that we changed the, we ch updated the website a bit. Uh, it's mostly the same, but we've updated the front page and how that works. Um, and you can actually see now that we have 42,236 fast laps up on the server. Um, I think that's, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> that's just amazing that it's been used that much already. We have a little over 1,000 customers, and it's just, it's just awesome that we're, we're able to do that. Um, some of the new things that we've added, um, one is the forums. So if you go to the forums, and I get Steve, in fact, was the was kind of the 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 first user to actually jump out and say to suggest something and wanted a users group meeting. So we had one as soon as he suggested it because I thought it was a great idea. Um, so you know, th these are here, and this is a, a second a third party component that we've bought, but it does a pretty nice job, I think. Of, uh, of of laying out a forum and all of that, and I hope that this becomes more of a, a useful tool. Um, you can only post if you're a, an actual registered member. You don't have to be a customer, but you have to be a registered member to, to, to post here. But you also can, uh, but anybody could read it at any given time. So that's kind of a, a neat thing. Um, so one of the, the new things you can do is that when you log in, when you come back to, to the home here, when you log in, which I'll do that right now, Oops. Can you hear me now? Sure can. Who's this? Uh, Lloyd. Hi, Lloyd. How are you? I, uh, I, I couldn't find the um, the mute thing, you know, and it's it's the, the icon up top, not the one down low. Right. So, hey, but you got it now. That's okay. <laughs> um, yeah. No, glad to have you with us. So, um, 
So logging in, you'll notice that the login page has changed. It actually just lists the news here. But one of the neat new things it has is the Teams. And the Teams are the, are the big new item that we've added. And the whole point of this is to make setup sharing and working with guys a lot easier. Um, we've, I've got a couple of Teams here. These are all different things that I've done just, just for testing. But if you jump into a Team, every Team has a couple of different things that are part of it. Um, the first one is you get a Team blog. So when somebody uploads a lap, or or makes a comment about something you know you can you, you'll have a blog where you can share it doing all the nice bloggy type things you'd expect a, a blog to be able to do but it's just private just for your team and the way the teams work is that if you purchase the team you're the team owner and whatever your iRacing subscription is it's extended to match the length of the team so as long as you keep removing renewing the team you end up getting um, you will always um, have your subscription extended now that's kind of nice because if you're the team owner um, it's only 20 bucks for the team so you don't have to pay the full boat to re-up for the year subscription so it's about half price a little bit little little, little bit more than than half like by a buck or something um, so it's actually kind of a nice thing and the and then the blog itself is integrated with the laps so that you can download the laps and the setups directly right from the blog. You also have a lap, the lap, the private team lap database where you can come in and you can see all the different cars and such that have had laps uploaded for them and with the tracks and however else you might want to look at that. Um, and you can rearrange this in a, in a number of different ways by being able to select columns, how you want to sort them, um, that kind of thing. Uh, and then we have a, a team info and car selection. Um, each team, you can, if you purchase a team, you can, you can specify which cars you actually want it to um, use. So, if, so for example, if you, and if you don't specify any, any, it'll actually use them all. But if you specify just a few, it'll only save the setups and, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the track data for just these for, for your particular um, user. And any user can be a member of any number of teams. So you can have one team that does cup racing, another one that does IndyCar, another guy does formula, formula racing of some sort, and, and you'll only upload that to, to, to those particular teams. Um, so it's a, it's a fairly um, flexible um, way of being able to get around and look at things or, 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 or to, to share data. And the nice thing is you have one spot where data is available, and when you go and download it, you get the data and the setup, and it'll actually be useful, I think. And the team owner also has this members page, and on this members page, the team owner can turn off whether they get notifications or not. Um, plus, they can also add and remove, invite invite members to come on the to come on the racing team and uh, and and remove them if needs be. And hopefully, that never happens. I mean, of course, you can ex extend the subscription. And so that's kind of the the new team feature. Uh, when you have a team, you get up to ten gigabytes of data, which is quite a lot. I mean, that's over two thousand laps worth of data that you could store within that. And that's at a uh, um, uh, and that's at a conservative estimate. So, so hopefully this will this will be a tool that you'll be able to use if you're using a racing team uh, uh, one way or the other. Are there any questions Jonathan, on? I have, so, oh, sure. Yes. Um, is there a limit on members for no. a team? No, you can have no. as many as you want. As many as you want. Um, you know, they all, of course, have to have I analyze racing to take to get anything out of it. Um, that's, right. You know that, but but that's the. But it's it's really kind of nice. And actually, when we go to the program here, um, you'll notice it has this new teams menu up here, and this teams menu allows you to get access to the individual. Um, um, teams that are up there. Notice these are the same three that we had a choice from, and the nice thing is is that when. Um, we're looking at these individual laps. If it, you'll notice that there's a new upload to team, uh, upload lap to team button that's now part of the um, data source selection window. And when you click this, it uploads that particular lap up into uh, um, the the server into your private team account. And you'll notice here it has this little button that says, "Hey, something happened." It just so happens it knows that we just uploaded this. So it says, there it is. But if you click on it, it'll come, it'll download it, and it'll, and it'll put it, uh, ask to save it, and it'll save it as, it'll also ask to extract the setup as well. Um, so you have the setup and the, and the lap already selected out, ready to go. So if, if you need to get the setup for the next race or for whatever you're doing, it's a, it's a pretty quick thing to do. Um, the, 
you know, part of the of what's been added to make this even more functional is the online browsing tool has been improved. Um, I think uh, there's been a bunch of little changes to it. I don't think there's a lot of of anything significant. It's kind of the same thing it's been previously, but you can now look at things um, a little bit differently. Um, what was I just? That was the uh, what was what was it? The spec for? Oh no, a Skippy car. That's what it was. I don't have the Spicky Skippy car. Where is it? I'm not seeing it. Where is it? Where'd she go? It doesn't matter, though. We can just pick up a couple of these other guys for this particular track. Um, and, oh, that's, oh, that maybe that's perhaps, perhaps that's why. If you, if you pick the team... Where is the Formula 2000? Oh, I don't see it. It should be here somewhere. Okay, I may have just found a bug. I love it when that happens uh, because it should have the Skippy car here somewhere, and maybe I'm just blown by it. But um, when you click uh, Find Laps, because we've specified a team to look at, it will also look up the team as well, and now it separates things based on the series, um, and the season that it was running at. And it will show you, it tells you if there's a setup or not in the lap, because sometimes you won't upload those. Now, Team 1s will always have a setup, but um, I'm pretty sure if we look in here, we'll see that there are some that do and don't um, from different users, um, just in the in the regular ianalyzeracing.com uh, sharing, because you can optionally turn on and off the, sh the setup stuff. And remember, when you share setups with ianalyzeracing.com, you actually get a uh, um, eight-hour credit. Um, so if you share three in a day, you get a free day of I Analyze Racing subscription. So theoretically, your subscription can last forever if you share that many laps with setups and such. Um, and you don't have to be a selected lap either. One of the things that we do um, to, to make sure we have quality laps is we only take the top 10% of laps in the last 30 days is essentially uh, how, how it works. So if you're within 10% of the fastest time that's occurred in the last 30 days, we'll take your lap. Um, but other, otherwise, we, we don't upload it because we don't want to be, uh, we want to make sure that there's quality stuff out there for, for, for folks to have. And one of the new things that we've added that's a little bit different is that um, it also takes into account the track temperature for the day. So when the turf, when depending upon what the surface temperature is, whether it's 70 to 80 degrees, 80 to 90, 90 to 100, and on, on and on, if for that, so it's not only for the last 30 days, the fastest lap in the last 30 days within the 10 degree band that that you're looking at. So if you if you go into a lap with the variable weather now, I've heard guys say that there can be up to a 30 or 40 degree swing in track temperature. So in order to make that um, to take that into account as well. Um, that that can make a, a pretty significant difference. So we so we allow that um, as one of the parameters that decides whether we take the lap or not. Now, one of the nice things is is that you can also decide. You also see we've add, added some new sorting features. So if you if you are paying attention to the weather and you're looking for particular things, you know you can um, say, hey, the surface temperature ascending, descending, whatever. Um, you can sort things in a different manner. Let's see, where do we have lots of them so we can see it actually change. Okay, uh, this is slightly different. I guess it should, should, should change here. Yeah, there we go. Um, and so you can see that these actually change now um, with, uh, with whatever, um, with, with the temperature as well. And so it's, it's sorted a lot better. I think it gives you a little bit more information as to, as to what you're actually looking at um, lap-wise. I kind of like the format a little bit better the way it is now than the way it has been um, in the past. I think it's a little easier to read, and it gives you a, a better way to sort things and, and, and look at stuff. And, of course, you still have all your different ways you can, you can look at things here as well. So that's so that's really all of the team features um, that we're adding. I think I know we're going to eventually have uh, requests for for future stuff. And actually, I'm looking for folks to start telling me what we should be doing, um, t what additional stuff we should add team wise, because um, I think it's actually a, a worthwhile uh, or an interesting way to look at the stuff. Um, so that brings us into what we have for for new features. Um, one of the, the nice things that we've got is our setup report, and of course I probably don't have any data that actually has it here. Oh, there we go. 
Oh, come on, thingy. There we go. So here we have our, our setup report. And what the setup report does is it actually shows you your setups. And it tries to look as much as it possibly can like the actual setup for, um, like the actual iRacing such that you're used to seeing. And you should see, I think, that, that most of these are, are, are fairly similar and they have the same units and, the, and position numbers and such and, and are hopefully in the same order that you're used to seeing them. And the nice thing is is that when you make changes, and of course I don't have something with the change because I was just goofing around when I was testing at Bristol. Bristol is my favorite oval track because I can do lots of laps really quickly there and it's easy, easy, easy to drive uh, no matter what I get in. Um, so I, you'll see me do like Formula Renault at Bristol Motorsports Park, which is something that will probably never happen in reality. Um, Anyway, the, uh, so it will show you, this gives you a quick way to compare the different setups, and when something is different, it'll actually highlight it in red. So if these cambers were different, this camber and this one, it would show that it's different. Um, nice thing is that everything is in sync, um, so that when you scroll, you're always able to look at both of them at the same, at the same time. Um, this is a new feature uh, that just got added in the pre-release. It's not out in the regular release yet, so you might want to go download the pre-release and give that a, that a try, um, is the ability to have this pop up and pop down and stay open and that was a request of one of our beta testers. Um, and I think he was right to request it. I should have done it that way to begin with so that this actually looks a little, this actually can stay up where you can, you don't have to worry about it disappearing so you can jump back and forth as you're uh, uh, picking laps and things. Um, I never knew that was down there. It's, it's brand new, it, 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 it's brand new. And you know, one of the things that, that's really good and I think really bad about the way that we do things is these blue bars. I think are awesome, but at the same time, I think a lot of people don't go to look at them and see what's there. So, for example, the segment comparison, now this has been around for a while, but um, a lot of folks don't know that this exists, is that you can take a look at from segment to segment to segment and compare the reference lap to the data lap and find out where you're gaining and losing time just by looking at this. Um, I mean, I think happen to think this is one of the, the most useful tools, especially on a road course. Um, where, where you can lay out a bunch of different uh, corners instead of just these two. Um, and you can really see where you're gaining and losing time, I think, in a, in a, in a, in a, and where, where the corners are that you have to work on because uh, it really kind of highlights what you're doing wrong, especially when you start looking for, you know, at longer straights and, and, and that kind of thing. Um, I find those are really helpful too, um, especially for the fixed ovals, the speed in and speed out really helps you with your lifting points on the mile and a half and stuff um, in the fixed ovals. Sure, sure. I mean, if you're like me, well, you're not like me because you actually pay attention to it and I'm a horrible driver, but um, the, the uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I just, I mean, I just use the speed out as my gauge as to where, what am I doing properly? I mean, because that's, that's the only way I can ever really tell because I am so wildly inconsistent um, in my driving that it just, uh, um, it's just one of the things I do, but yeah, but that's exactly right. It's 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 a useful thing. Um, I like this one for road course. If you change this to the rate of time gain and lo gain and lost, I like this because it really kind of shows you um, how much. And this is actually a pretty good example. It pretty much shows you where I lost all the time, and it was pretty much right in the first, you know, what third of the quarter um, is is pretty much where I lost it, and I just kept losing more and more time one compared to the other because I just didn't carry speed or what have you for whatever. Um, I just think that this is kind of a, a useful little tool. Sometimes it doesn't give you as much detail because it can be very fine grain, but I think it, overall it's a, it's a pretty good tool. Um, let's see, I think the steering page doesn't have anything new on it. This is the same as it's always been, but it also does have the segment comparison and such as well. Um, and it has this. I, one of the, oh, oh, wrong page I'm thinking of. Um, this is still the same. Uh, the track page is still the same. It still has the same segment comparison um, and the same plots and things. Um, I don't know. Do you guys like this middle plot over here on the right to show you on the track where you're losing and gaining time? I don't know if that's a useful tool or not. Um, I, I know it's kind of interesting just from a, okay, it's pretty, it's eye candy. I don't know if it's something anybody uses or not. I've used it on road courses. I don't find it that I use it much on the ovals like this, um, but I think there is some use to it when you're running the road. Sure. Okay. 
Uh, well, that's good to know. Um, let's see, the gearing tab is still pretty much the same um, that it's always been, uh, where it just tries to estimate what the different gearing gearings are for the different cars. And of course, here they're going to be darn close to the same. Um, and uh, anyway, the let's see, what else? Then the ride height tab, um, of course, this will have the center front splitter ride height as well. Now, one of the things that I've actually asked iRacing for, and I am waiting, and I know it's been requested, I don't know if they're actually going to get around to doing it, um, but is adding in the track width and the... Um, and, and, and the wheelbase of the vehicles. And this is actually going to be useful because once we have that, we'll actually be able to do things like plot roll centers so we can get an idea of where the, of where the roll center of the vehicle is and getting into more handling type things. But when, once you know where the roll center is, the better you control the roll center, the better, the better handling you're going to have. And so we're going to be adding that in um, as, as kind of, a, you know, this is more data stuff that we'd like to be able to get. Because that's certainly something that the, uh, you know, say, for example, a, a little bit more sophisticated system like MoTeC has the ability to do, but we ought to be able to have as well. Um, Can we also get uh, weight distribution? The, we actually, I think we have that in the setup stuff now, so we might, we should be able to get at it, I think. Do we have, yeah, we have the corner weights here. I should be able to pull those out, um, at least at the static way. Now, at the, if that's the case, then we should be able, if we have the static corner weights, we, we ought to be able to calculate them and, 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 and figure out what's going on as we're as going through the corners. Um, I'll have to do some thinking about that. I, I know I know you can do some fun math channels and stuff in, in uh, higher end data acquisition systems, and we're going to get there eventually, but just not um, right yet. Um, the, but that would be an interesting thing to be able to see. You know what? Are, you know what are we getting on the? Uh, you know where is all the weight in the car? And again, that's something that you can figure out if you have the roll centers and the and, and the center of gravity. You can kind of figure out where everything's going. Um, so that's that's going to be there, and of course that's all predicated on the the wheelbase and the and the track width of the cars, both the front and the rear axle. And that's actually and one of the interesting things, and that's actually something I've always been interested in in racing, and I don't know the answer to this, is you know a short track car and a super speedway car in, in cup is a, is a, is a lot different <laughs> um, than one to the other. Um, even today, I believe that's still the case. It used to be even worse. Um, and so I'm really kind of curious to see, uh, you know, what the, how, what those, the range of those things actually are. And even on some of the newer cars, finding the, uh, the wheelbase or the, or the track width has been a difficult thing to do. So it'll be great that hopefully iRacing will include that and we'll be able to extend things out a little bit with regards to that. Um, so let's see, the damper tab has been improved. You'll notice it's a little bit different than what it used to be. Um, it actually has space for six dampers here. If you take a look at IndyCar data, um, there are apparently are six dampers now on an IndyCar, uh, which makes some sense to a certain point of view. But even odder, if, if you own the Formula Renault, uh, the Formula Renault only has three dampers. It has one damper up front and two in the back which is wildly interesting to me. Um, I've, I, I, I guess maybe the formula cars, it's, it offers better control or, or, or the control is enough there with just the one damper. Um, I mean, formula, uh, formula racing, just like anything else these days, it's about keeping the aero platform where it needs to be. And that is just kind of interesting to me. But so you'll see if uh, when we open Formula Renault data, you'll just have the three dampers here. Um, or if an Indy car, you'll have all six. So you'll be able to take um, a look at them. And they, and they're, they're, they behave a little differently. Um, and and how, you, how you diagnose and look at things with regards to them um, is a little bit different. Of course, we have the tire temps page, which is, still remains to me the ugliest uh, page known to man, but it's still out there. Guys like it, apparently. Um, uh, apparently, it's, it's been a big help. The uh, multi-lap uh, page is something that we've added. Uh, let's go back and get one of these guys and come back to the multi-lap page here. Um, you can see you can just pick a, uh, pick a channel and it will plot all of them. I happen to really like this plot uh, uh, just for, you know, for example, with the brake signal, you can see how wildly inconsistent I am lap to lap to lap. Um, when we, we were at the Texas trade show, I was working with a few guys and they were just 
dead solid perfect every time they would break it if they were breaking 249 and 0.2 feet they would break there every single time and I'm I just don't know how you guys do that so I'm, I was so wonderfully impressed by that but it really does help to show consistency and if you're looking at and, and you typically you'd use things like this so for example if you were uh, diagnosing car problems not so much in, in iRacing because we don't really get those um, that often um, you can also look at the lap by lap pressure increases and such as well but um, you can just do all sorts of things in this particular thing and of course it does all the you know the zoomy things that uh, you expect the plots to do um, sandbox is all still pretty much the same the uh, in those news nothing really new here in terms of, uh, of features you know you lay out you can lay out with plots and displays you always start with a distance plot um, and then you can throw some of these guys out here um, and then once you have these guys out, you can take them and stack them and size them and do all sorts of fun things. And then save those layouts. So if we're if we don't let you if we don't have a pre-built plot looking at things already, you can have your own. So let's say you wanted to look at all brake pressures on this particular one, you could you could do that. Um, of course, the lap report breaks down the laps and will show the drivers in the different sessions that you'll be in, so you'll be able to get an idea of what's a good lap um, and all of that, um, and what the optimal laps actually look like, and what the ideal lap for, amongst all the drivers as well. Um, oh, and notice this uh, little blue light uh, started blinking up here. One of our one of our uh, teammates, Gary Corbett, just finished a lap over at Charlotte Motor Speedways. Uh, in, in, in a Ford Fusion, which I think is pretty neat. They just get that notification while we're sitting here um, uh, going over the the uh, uh, um, the product. Anyway, um, the pit report uh, was in the initial release, but it wasn't as good as I would have liked it to be, so I've spent some time in working with one of the beta testers improving this, and now this is a lot better, and we've added a lot more information. Um, you get all the standard, this is what your tire pressures were, the wear, the temperature, carcass temperatures, all that. You also get your fuel load and what, how much that fuel load changed. So, you know, we left the pits, um, came out and used a tenth of a gallon and, you know, did apparently three laps. So that's about three tenths of a, of a gallon that we actually used there. Um, and so it actually shows you that. Um, but the new additions is really with the time is that one, we give you a little bit more information on the time. It's like, for example, this is this time from reaching the pit stall until you get to pit out on your outlet when you have a, when you're leaving the pits. Uh, you have the time since, the time that has expired since the last time you exited the pits um, for, for the in lap. So basically how long the stint was. Uh, you have your out lap, how long it take, took you to go from leaving the pits to crossing start finish again. Um, and your in-lap, the time from crossing start finish to getting back into the pits last time around. Um, it'll show you the laps in the stint, and it will also show you the average time for the uh, for the laps that you ran in the stint, not including the in or the out laps. And I think that's that's a lot lot new info, lot of new information, new stuff that we added. Um, it's been kind of interesting to do because, uh, as with all the telemetry stuff, te telemetry stuff, what you think would be easy to do necessarily isn't um, because of the network nature of the product and and the data that we're actually working with. So it, I think uh, we've cleaned things up quite a bit and actually made this uh, a, a more useful uh, report for folks and certainly will help guys that are doing pit stop races get a better idea of what their in and out times are because the you know when you look at a pit stop there are really three phases to it getting into the pit box getting the pit box pit service done and then getting out of the pit box now the pit service we have no control over that's all i racing magic but the in and out box is all driver dependent and so it's it gives you an idea of uh, you know, as soon as you get an idea of how long it takes you to do in and out laps for a particular track, it gives you a goal of something to improve upon. So that that's a that's a that's a new report, and I guess that's something um, uh, that that folks have been asking for. Um, let's see, we have fuel report as well. Um, that's pretty much the same that it's always been, with a couple of little bug fixes here and there. Um, and that, of course, the last page, of course, is the options page. And in the uh, the new version, we have so we have some new things. We have the standard stuff, your credentials, the, which measurement system you're running, all the voice command stuff. This is all uh, pretty standard things. We've cleaned up how the telemetry, uh, and we've added some new features to how the telemetry stuff works. 
um, and specifically with regards to what mode it runs in, the processing mode it is, a, is a new feature that is meant to help lower end systems where uh, might be having some issues with uh, 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 unexpected um, lags or, or start, stops and starts um, where we're using a little bit more processing power than we would have liked. So we've added ways to help reduce that and improve things on the lower end systems. And of course the memory management stuff is, is still the same. And just to go over this stuff because it's not something you know that a lot of folks talk about and and, and I, it's usually a fire and a forget item but it certainly doesn't hurt to know about it. Uh, the telemetry mode just lets you pick out what how you want to get the data, whether you want to run in dual mode or classic mode. Dual mode means you're going to use the I analyze racing telemetry and the I racing telemetry. And when the sessions when when you're in session, when you go back to the garage screen um, or the you know the in the I'm not racing right now screen, um, the it will it will try to merge the live da the data it just collected with the iRacing data to tr so you can have access to th to to fun things like the uh, ride heights and temperatures and and, and uh, tire temperatures and, uh, and such things that aren't necessarily shared in the public telemetry stream um classic mode just just does just the iRacing or just the i analyze racing um, uh, data collection and it doesn't and you do and it, by doing that you say i don't want the ride heights or this or that so it may be something which is also you know another way you can help save time if you have a lower end system it's just use classic mode if you're in a race or some such thing um, as and not a practice session because that will um, help things there and of course then you have the i racing auto start and manual so that you can record if, if, if you wanted to you could just use the i racing stuff um, the difference between the two modes between just using the i racing or the i analyze racing is the i analyze races gets you every single signal you can shake a stick at and all the other cars in the session and then for all the other cars in the session it will get the five signals that you're interested in which are or that are available which is displacement um, distance on the track velocity um, engine rpm gear selection and steering wheel position and actually, from from those five signals, you can tell an awful lot about somebody's lap, and you can use that to compare yourself against a fast lap um, pretty quickly here. Um, the processing mode. Now, this is new, um, and you know one of the things when you're getting those, if you have a machine where you're getting the start and jumps, start and jumps, or you're just concerned that you want to make sure that you don't have that, then you might want to take a look at doing the processing mode. And what the processing mode does is that, you know, right now, if you know in the older versions of I analyze racing, if you have um, that up and running, and you're taking a, a and, and you're collecting data, it's processing all that data as it comes in. It's looking at it, trying to figure out, have you completed a lap? Has the other drivers completed a lap? And it tries to work with all that data to get an answer on um, so that if you get into if you go into the pits and go into the uh, I'm, I'm not racing anymore screen and you use alt tab and you jump into I analyze that the data is right there for you to be able to use so it's doing that while the whole race is going on and there's all sorts of work that has to be done um, to make that happen I mean this is another one of the things with the telemetry stuff is it's always interesting is that it's not as easy as you think it would be to be able to detect when the lap starts and stops um, and hey. hey Doug yes um, I have a question Sure. Now, say I'm in a, uh, I run with the old farts and, you know, trucks, mile and a half, and I'm in a practice session. I, I only want to record just my telemetry. I don't want any other information. And the reason why is because when I, when I leave that and I go into this, and I want to look at my dampers or whatever. Um, it's downloading too much information, and it's like taking forever. Um, can I only just download my stuff? Um, right now, it's everything's everything's embedded um, because that's just it, it, that's believe it or not the iRacing telemetry the way it's formatted and the telemetry that's in the telemetry stream are formatted the exact same way it's just that they don't include all of the other data that's an interesting idea though um, to to not process the other car data that that'll actually be something I'll add in as a as a switch to help speed things up for you um, yeah I mean I mean, I have a quad computer and a nice card, but it's not that. But when when I practice by myself, it seems to do the transfer pretty quick. But if I'm in a 
group of say 15 cars, it just seems like it takes forever to transfer all that data, you know, to where I can actually see it on the screen. Well, believe it or not, it's actually transferring the same amount of data. But what's happening is, is that you've got 15 cars that are running all at the same time, and we have to be, and we have to process that data and figure out from what iRacing tells us when did they complete a lap. And whenever you open a data file, it has to do all of that processing. So that's actually what you're looking at, and that's what you're seeing as the as, as the as, as the delay, if that's the way to to, to look at that. Um, and if actually we were to throw in the switch that says, "Hey, ignore the other cars," we just wouldn't do them, and you, and we wouldn't you wouldn't have to get that processing. In fact, I don't think that'll be that hard to do. I'm actually going to take a look at that and see if I could throw it into this release for you. Um, because that, I think that that would actually be a useful thing for, for other folks as well. And it might just be another um, ways of, do, of doing things. Um, um, one th I, one I got th one. Okay, well, let me, let me, one more thought here. One other thing I'd suggest trying is, okay. um, is, is just try to use the, um, uh, the, one of these processing modes, okay? Um, because these processing modes, what they do is that they keep um, you from being, or, or keep the system from processing the data, and it, and it does it a lot quicker merging the stuff and, and, and things um, after the fact than, than during the fact. Um, it's just one of the things that I've noticed. So that would be a, a, a one, one suggestion as well. You have another question, Mike? Yeah, um, what, what, earlier you were going over the dampers and uh, a suggestion I would make, I've done quite a bit of testing with them and, uh, you know, looking at the velocities and all that, um, a, a suggestion to other drivers, um, in other words, make sure you run at least, at least 15 laps and the reason why is on the, on the data side, click on lap one and then on the resource side, go down to at least lap 10 or more and click on that and then and then bring those both up in the uh, where it shows the velocities and what you can see is as the tires build up it changes you know the rigidity of that corner of the vehicle and that changes the shock velocities and what you're looking for are those differences going in the right direction that's a good point. Hey, I never would have even thought about um, um, doing that, but that's actually an excellent practical point about how to use this particular plot um, in, in terms of uh, what's actually going on. Huh, good point. Yeah, and I'm, I'm still a little bit questionable as to how useful this actually is within iRacing because it's a simulation, because I'm not terribly sure I understand how sophisticated their model actually is. Um, or it may just be that I don't understand the data well enough, and that could be too. But I mean, it's good to hear that folks are using it. Um, I know that this is the typical way that you look at stuff for race cars, no matter what you do anyway. Uh, you know, where you're, whether you're looking at road course or, or, or oval stuff. So, no, that's a, well, that's a great practical yeah. tip as well. Well, what I've had to do is, um, it's almost like, and, and now, and, and you got to understand, this is the sim world. Um, it's almost like you have don't think of them as shocks. You almost have to think of them as opposing springs. Huh, that's an interesting concept. Yeah, and, and it, on, why why do you say that? Because because you because you kind of feel it, it 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 they act just more to cancel the force as opposed to actually do do a, a true dampening effect. Or well, for instance. Okay, say for instance, say your uh, your bump on the right front, say it's low, down around eight. All right, well you change it, raise that bump up to sixteen, and watch what it does to the ride height. Sure. It's well, acting, it's acting more like a spring than the changing the valving and the shock. Well, I guess I guess it's gonna, and, and actually maybe maybe for that particular corner, that's interesting. I wonder. Well, that would depend on their damper model too. I mean, because dampers are just supposed to be velocity sensitive devices, right? They're not supposed to 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 respond to anything else. Um, you know, you. Well, well, they're only supposed to offer resistance. It's nothing but a hydraulic valve. It's only supposed to offer resistance to shaft movement. 
Right, and that's dependent upon velocity. Exactly. Right. There are some displacement sensitive shocks, but they're, that's mostly off-road stuff and, and some weird stuff. And you can get into more interesting things like on the Corvette, uh, it has rheostatic shocks. And rheostatic shocks are kind of interesting because they have a, a, a wire wrapped around them. You run the current through it, and depending upon the current that you're running through it, you increase or decrease the velocity of the uh, or the viscosity of the of the rheostatic fluid in the shock absorber. And when you do that, that that's going to increase or decrease dampening uh, based on whatever you're doing at the particular time. So you can get all sorts of funky, really control based on that, but that's really getting out there in the in the thing. So I'm kind of curious as to what iRacing shock model is like. And in fact, I think one of these user group meetings, I'm going to try and get somebody from iRacing so we can ask him questions like that and say, hey, how's the best way you would use this? You know, and I think that would be a useful thing for us to be able to do. But um, let's see, where were we? We were talking can about... Can I uh, interject a question here? Sure. Um, uh, on the forum thread where I... Uh, post uh, having a meeting to discuss questions, uh, what the, uh, Ricky Thompson asked a question about dampers and he said that his question was, uh, what should I be looking for in terms of dampers on an oval? And uh, yeah, you're getting down to the uh, right, right there, uh, Ricky Thompson's question. Dampers is another question I have and how they relate to oval cars. I'm only oval for the most part, what should I be looking for in a damper on an oval track? And uh, that, that suggestion that, that uh, was it Lloyd who, who just uh, told us about? Uh, right. Yeah. yeah. Right. And that's a real point. I mean, in general, when you're looking at dampers, I mean, and, and just to give you, I mean, to give you an, idea, an overview of how this page is, is theoretically intended to work, I mean, ideally in, in a race car, in any race car, whether it's an oval car or, or a road course car, the handling of the race car happens between uh, plus or minus an inch per second um, in general. There are some that would say it's an inch and a half or, or two inches per second, and that's you have to look at that whole portion of the graph. Um, in fact, I can actually show you guys something. Let's see if we've got this up here. Uh, that's not what I want. This program here, and please don't give me a hard time for this because it's a 15-year-old program. Um, but this is actually um, the software that I've been professionally been spending quite a bit of my life on um, for a company called Roarig Engineering that has been recently purchased out, well, two years ago recently, uh, purchased by a company called MTS, uh, Measurement Test and Sensor out of, out of Minneapolis, or Eden Prairie, uh, uh, Minnesota. And this is actually um, data from, uh, let's see if I can find data here. Um, Oh, we'll just use this guy. That'll work fine. Um, this is actually what a uh, actual shock graph actually looks like when you test them on a shock absorber, and you you can see that you know this is uh, the bottom axis is velocity and the force uh, axis is is over here on the left hand side. Because when you're testing shock absorbers, one of the things that you're actually looking at is you're looking at um, force versus velocity because shocks dampers are velocity sensitive to devices. And anyway, this this graph here is to kind of show you um, this is the kind of the most interesting stuff happens at this nose point. You can see it has two different nose points depending upon um, which direction you're actually going. Because when you're testing a shock absorber, um, if you think of uh, uh, when you're compressing it, you you, you you, you, you basically run a sine wave or you play a sine wave through a shock absorber and what that does is it compresses the shock absorber and then expands it back out and so there are essentially four different phases of a shock absorber uh, moving. So if you start at bottom dead center and you compress the shock absorber, the compression valves on the compression shim of the sock will start to open and that's known as the compression open. Then once you get to the um, midpoint of the shock absorber, of, of the test that you're actually running, then the shock absorber starts to slow down and those valves will start to close. So that's compression close. And then you get to top, then you, when you get to the top of the test range, um, then all the compression valves are closed and you start moving in the other direction now in rebound. So when you come down in rebound, you start opening the rebound valves. And when you come down in, um, when you get past mid-stroke, it starts slowing down again as you get down to the bottom of the test 
poor form or what we call bottom dead center. And so the valve, the shock, the shock shim stack actually start to close, um, and that's rebound close. And what we can do is we can look at, um, and typically what guys will do is they'll look at compression open and and rebound close, or or, or they'll look at. Um, you can see the name of the graph up here. They'll look at rebound open compression close to try to figure out to get the to get this nose to do what they want and whether they want the the V to be to be more narrow or they want it to be wider and such. You'll be able to. They, that's one of the things that they actually use to be able to understand how the how the shock is performing and all of that stuff is done. You know, really right in here in this inch per second area this is this is pretty much the the big deal because when it starts to change and how how it handles the 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 the, the change from from moving to not moving and 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 starting to move um from from being um stationary is that's how it determines how the handling is actually going to end up working at because depending upon the side that you're going on if you're on compression coming down this way um, the uh, you know the this nose value is really going to affect things but we don't have access to this graph in iRacing I've tried a couple of ways to try to generate at least a composite version of this and I just can't do it it's it's the data is there but I just can't find a way to refine this in a way that makes sense I mean I can do it for the whole track and you can see it but unfortunately when you do that um, you get a you get a graph that's that's a little bit nonsensical um, and ends up looking something like let's see where's my data uh, do I have Charlotte data here probably don't darn it hey Doug yes sir I think maybe what he may be asking you and and you you covered this once before in one of these sessions um, what you're looking for is a a lower difference on the low speeds oh yeah oh oh and I'm getting oh yeah and I'm getting there I'm sorry yeah I, I just oh, thought okay. I, I just I just thought this was kind of interesting for you guys I, I, okay. I, I didn't okay. know it, yeah I just this is just something else this is the other part of my world right um, and yeah. I, I just think that being able to see this kind of stuff is, is is kind of interesting and this is kind of the reasoning behind what we're actually looking for so when we come back to this guy Okay, so here we have the bins, and here's the one inch, you know, the one, inch, if we're looking at the red one here, we've got the minus one inch to the positive one inch. What you want to see in any particular graph is that, you know, if you're familiar with what a bell curve looks like, you want balance from, um, on, on the low speed side, from rebound and bump, okay, and especially at the low speed um, in, in, in the in the interesting bits in the bins that are below say an inch per second and the reason why that has to, should be is of interest is because what comes up and is what comes down and if you're and if something is happening in the low speed realm um, you'd like to be able to control that in the load speed realm but if you're say for example you're loading the the vehicle up really quickly and so it's happening at two or three inches per second as the as as, as you really say you're turning left in the corner and it's loading up the right yeah. front and it's happening at three inches per second that's happening pretty quickly and then it takes forever for it to unload because it goes back down very slowly well you're gonna have an imbalance in the race car that's actually gonna make it want to um, oversteer a bunch on exit okay and so that's one of the things you want to look for what you want is nice bell shaped curve you know balance so that it you know it has the nice um, a nice shape to it I mean this actually the lower left hand corner one is the uh, the left rear is actually not so bad it's kind of close but it, you know a perfect one would it'd be very symmetrical as well and that's kind of what you're looking for in the damper tabs for, for each of them like now there's a caveat to this that I'll get into a little bit um, but that's actually what you're looking for and you want to keep this difference here between the low speed and the rebound bumps as as low as you possibly can because then you know you're controlling the weight transfer and the handling of the race car as best as you can now having said that you also have to make adjustments for um, the track and for the driver because some guys just prefer a car that you know loads up or or doesn't um, or, or that just resets really quickly and they have a preference which will shift the shape of what this actually looks like a little bit depending upon the corner that you're after um, 
so you hit so there's a little bit of balance um, and a little bit of learning you have to do um, to be able to make that sense for how you drive and for how other folks drive if you're doing setups and such for other guys and the way you use this graph in total is that you first start on or at least I always recommend starting on the most important corner on the car which to me is always the right front it's the one you do the steering with it's also the one that gets the most load to it etc especially on ovals um, so you start there and you want to get that that graph looking as nice as you can and then once you have that you look across the axle and try to get those to match each other as best you can and then once you have that then you look at from the same side of the car and get those to match you know using the right front as your um, as, as your preferred thing. Now, if you had a, a track, a road course track that had predominantly left turns, um, then you'd want to take a look at the left front, obviously, because be, you'd be looking at it. Same idea, just a little bit different. Um, let's see, what else, what else did I wanted to say? So that's kind of what you're looking for with, within the plot. And the reason, I mean, and again, going back to what I was showing with the shock stuff, was that the reason is, is that you're trying to, that's where all the handling and where that transition and how things happen um, is, is, is determined. And in fact, you know, the, you know, some of the bigger race teams, what they do for, and certainly with regards to the uh, uh, Winston Cup teams, they have bunches of shocks already built and they have a special nomenclature for them. You know, and the crew chief says, well, get me a, a you know, a, 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 a two D stacks or whatever they're, whatever they say. And uh, they'll go and they'll get them and say, oh, no, make it a C minus because I need to, because they're, they're looking to move and adjust the nose to affect the handling of the race car um, subtly. So does that answer your question, you think, Steve? Well, it, it wasn't my question, so. Oh, well, I, well, I, well, I know it was Ricky's, yeah, yeah, but I mean, but, I mean does that give yeah, you but that it's, idea? Yeah, that's really good information. I, I, that's fascinating stuff, and I'm going to try to put that to use. That's yeah. really good. Yeah, it, it, it's, yeah it's, as, as a noble guy, that helps. Oh, good. Well, okay. like, like I was saying before, um, you know, on the data side, click on one of your early laps, and then on the reference side, click on one of your later laps. and because you want, that difference is going to change as the tire pressures come up. That affects the the low speed bump velocity. So you in other words, in other words your set, your setup's going to you know how they change as you put laps on it and the heat the pressure comes up. So I have found that as a useful tool to help me see the transition of how the car is changing. Sure. Actually, Lloyd, I'm going to put you on the spot. Um, for the next user group meeting, would you mind putting together a 15, 20-minute presentation on how you look at stuff? Well, I can, but what, what I was going to do, and I, I just I got home late from work and I didn't get a chance, and I, I was going to, uh, right now, uh, the old farts were running at Texas, and um, of course, you know, a lot of the guys are off this weekend because a lot of guys are at the track at Charlotte right now. And um, what I was going to do was run some laps and then get you to load it up, and then where you could where you could see the difference and how it changes. Sure, sure. I think we could actually see that just in the in in the. Oops. Oh no. Nope, let me get back there. Ah, where to go? Well, uh, like I said, in any anything you do now, and, and you were right about changing. You work on the right front first because. When you change that right front, whether you put more bump or you put more spring or you put more air, all those things affect the firmness of that corner, and that, that changes that low-speed bump velocity, and it's all relative. Even when you change the front bar, it changes it, and you, you in other words, if you make a spring change, in other words, th this right here can help you maybe to even see that you need to make a spring change. Sure. And, and actually, you mentioned the right from you know you, a bar change affecting it, and you know of course that what what that does is let's say you go to a larger bar, or you put in a uh, or it's in a or a stiffer bar depending upon the car you're running. Um, you know the stiffer the bar the harder it's going to be to move. So it's going to change the velocities at which the shocks are actually going to be allowed to move and actually start having effect. So I mean, it's all it's all intertwined and shocks are, and understanding how shocks work with, with the relationship to the vehicle, I think is one of the hardest things in the world to do. And good vehicle dynamicists have, have, have that 
understood in, in, in spades and get a really a much better idea of, have a much better of, a, of an idea of how the car is controlled um, than us mere mortals. Uh, so. One last quick, uh, uh, hang on real quick. One last thing, uh, in the sandbox, I also monitor uh, the wheel speeds and what I'm looking for, um, the right rear wheel always runs a lot faster than the other three, which is kind of weird, but it, um, your, your rear air split, in other words, how much air you put in the left rear versus how much air you put in the right rear, um, in NASCAR, we're always working on what they call scrub, is how much it's dragging around the corner. Um, you can change that left rear air, uh, the, the air pressure, and that, that will change the, the wheel speeds in the rear. And the reason why I'm saying this is because if, you're, if your speeds are too far off, it'll cause your right rear tire to burn up. Yeah, and I'm wondering if that's because, this is actually something that I don't know the answer to, but I'm wondering if that's because of the stagger that's in the right rear anyway. Because they're not all the same diameter, the tires. Well, and, the the problem with the trucks, and I'll let this other guy talk. The problem with the trucks, we don't have a stagger, a physical stagger setting. In other words, we can't change the circumference of the tire like they can in other divisions. So we have to do that with air pressure. Right. And it's almost it's like changing the gearing because you know the inside line runs slower than the outside line. Sure, sure. No, that's a good point. Awesome. Great. Lloyd, you've added quite a bit today. I really appreciate your, your being here. That's awesome. Let's see. Um, what else is there? I'm trying to think. I, oh, we were back talking about the option stuff. I mean, Steve, did, did, you have anything, did anybody have any other questions? Or can I just f quick finish this up? Because we're, yeah, yeah. we're, on, yeah, we're on about I, an hour. I would like to hear you. I would like to hear you finish up, but I would like to get to my question that, that prompted me to post in the forum. So, oh, oh, golly, and you know, here I am, um, just just yammering on. Which was, let's get back to your question. Why don't you, um, why don't you ask your question here? Yeah, my my question was that under the steering tab, there's that uh, point plot sort of graph. And uh, I've heard you talk about it a couple times, but I don't really understand it. And I'm wondering if you could uh, help with some, yeah, that those, those yeah. points on the left there. Let me see if I can get some other data up here that would be more interesting. Um, and let's see if I can browse some Okiyama stuff. Let's see here. Ah, come on, Gerard. What am I doing? Skip Barber, Okiyama, full course. And I have some really old data that will take a little bit. Oh, and that's because I picked the wrong car too. Well, that doesn't help. Yeah. I keep trying to find ways to speed this up, but there's so much. Every time we open a file, it's just like it's, it's basically rerunning the race in the computer, believe it or not. Um, and there's only so much we can do uh, with regards to that. Okay, browse. Racing. Let's find the Mazda. And do I have more than just... Good, I do. One of these guys here. Close shock while we've got a time here, and yeah, we happen to be running the debug version of things because you'll notice I have the development environment running here. Because whenever I run, I run with the development environment just to make sure that you know if we're running if we're running into any bugs or any uh, things that cause a crash, I can catch them and get an idea of where they were, so we can take a look at them here. And hopefully this will be done here in a sec. There we go. 
Um, let's see, do I, and of course this doesn't have any data, I have one lap in there, awesomeness. Uh, well, actually, well, let's, well, that may be good enough. That, that may be good enough. It looks like it's a race lap, so it's kind of awful. Um, but let's see. Let's go online and see what we can come down with. Always really happy. This is I, I just am tickled that the, the way this works. I always am very happy with the way it came out. Um, okay, and we're gonna have oh not that one. Uh, that guy perhaps. Oh nope, that's Shane. And that's my awful lap that I'm trying to find. How about that one? That's the one perhaps I'm after. There we go. So there's a three-second difference here between the two of us. And what we've got going on, let's take a look at the steering tab now. Now, okay, up top you have the, uh, the, the data, data source tab driver. That would be for the data lap. That would be me. And the reference lap is the Shane Parrish for the uh, other driver. Um, let's see who just joined us here. Hey, Chris, how are you? Good to have you with us. Um, and so looking at this graph, there's a whole bunch of information here. Um, but on the left-hand side, what this shows is that this shows every single data point. And you'll notice that these are all color-coded. And the reason why they're color-coded is that for every color code, you'll notice the stripes on the graph. These are where, these are where the corners are. Because if we look here and say zoom in here, you can see, uh, oops, not, not, not what I wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. We'll zoom in here. If we look over at the track map here, you can kind of see, and actually if we go to the actual track map page, you can kind of see the corner better, how it comes in here down the straightaway. Here's the right-hander, then there's that short little shoot, um, and it looks like it continues on um, out of here, uh, or at least like it, that's how it assigned that particular corner, and I probably need to um, take that that little bit, there's that right little bend um, there. But you can see that these are the two different corners um, that we're talking about, or, or, or that can be, that, that we're looking at. And so you'll notice that we have blue, or light blue, okay, and there's actually some pinkish dots in here. And the, and the hollow white ones are, are, are the uh, uh, straightaways, uh, where the steering wheel on the straightaway. Now, what that means is, and what this, what this graph actually shows is on the bottom you have steering angle, and on the top, you, or on the left-hand side, you have lateral acceleration, okay? Now, when you think about it, when you're going into a corner, you turn the steering wheel just a little bit. When you turn that steering wheel, it creates a little of lateral G. You turn it a little bit more, you get more lateral G. You turn it more, you get even more. You turn it again, you get more. You turn it a fifth time or fourth time, and all of a sudden, you don't generate any more force. Lateral G when you do it. And it's at that point that you're actually um, pushing, okay? And so what you'll see is that as you either increase um, the turning, you'll notice uh, this is a little bit odd, but steering on uh, in, 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 in the iRacing world, left is positive degrees and right is negative degrees, which is works backwards than the way I would like it, but that's the way it is. Okay, so that as you turn left, you're, you're going to be steering the wheel more and more and more this way, and eventually you're going to get to a point where you're not going to be creating any more lateral G, and it's going to flatten out. And, you know, in this corner here, here's a left-hand corner, okay, right there, there's this brown one here, you can see that's exactly what happens. I'm turning in, I'm turning in, I'm turning in. And then I keep turning, but I'm not generating any more lateral force. So I'm actually pushing through that corner. And if you've raced at Okiyama, you know that that's a real low-speed corner. That's just not a lot of fun to be going through. Um, and it's, it's real easy to get it wrong. And you can scrub lots of speed there um, by not braking soon enough or early enough. And you have to just a little bit of a tricky corner with the camber there as well. Um, but th so that's what this actually shows. Now, if you were to get loose, if I were to get loose, what you'll see is, is that the lateral G would, because the lateral G is for the body of the car, and so it's going to still be, you know, trying to go off the track that particular way relative to um, the direction you have the, the, the chassis of the car turned. And so 
what you'd see is this in order to you, to catch it you'd be counter steering and the steering wheel would come all the way back over this way because you know if you're steering left and you get oversteer you're going to turn right away back to the right to steer into the the oversteer that way and so um, the tricks with using this this plot is that you'll notice that you get a fair if you've got an S shape then you've got a lot of understeer in the corners and you can kind of see that it's true for both um, myself and for um, uh, the Mr. Parrish, the guy who sent who set the the first lap here. And it, he's he's got push in this corner here, which is a right hander, the slow the slow hairpin at the end of the main straightaway. Okay, he's got it there in the right hander. He's got it um, at the end of the front straight as well in the in 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 the red corner. He gets a little bit of that, um, and I do as well. And so you can kind of see that. Now, what this line here is supposed to show, you'll notice that there's this, this red line and this blue line. That's supposed to show, if, if you're perfect when you're looking at that, you will see all of the dots up and down this entire um, uh, plot in a, in, a, in a fairly tight group right around it. You won't see any of this curvature left or right that you get when you get push in the corners. And that way, you know that you are you are either that you're you're right you're doing well in terms of you're not generating any push and you're not getting any understeer out of the car. So the car's balanced for you at that point, and or your steering balanced. Your steering is balanced anyway. Whether it's fast is another story. Um, but that's kind of what that shows, and 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 the way to look at it. And the reason why we color key it is so that you can get an idea of where on the track you should be looking. And between the two things, between the map and the color codes and what's going on in the corner, it ought to give you an idea of what you're looking at um, or what's happening in the race car. Does that answer your question, Steve? Yeah, I think so. I, I've always, often when I'm doing a new track and I don't really have any other frame of reference, I'll be driving the car around and I'll wonder, well, am I pushing or have I got oversteer or what have I got? And th this would sort of give me a an objective way of actually measuring what's going on, um, because you know we don't have that seat of the pants feel that you would have with a with a real car. So sure. it, th this would sort of give you at, at least it's, uh, the way I would use it is to see well how am I how is my car actually handling through the through the turns. Sure. And another thing you can actually do is just use the steering trace here, and then again the uh, steering speed. Okay. Um, one of the things that you could, that you'll notice is that if you're, and I'm a terrible example, of course, but you know if you'll notice, let's take a look in here. I think what you'll see is that Steve's a lot smoother than I am. Um, he has gradual changes of of, of steering compared to me as I, I, I tend to either steer too little and then have, get these big, huge little, you know, make it, I turn, get into the corner too late and I get these big spikes in steering, whereas he's, you know, he gets turned in and then turned back out uh, in a much smoother fashion than I do. And here he turns better. Um, and you can look at that and, and see that in the in, in the speed in, in the speed of the of, of the steering changes, and so you can actually use that as a guide as well, because ideally this ought to be nice and smooth and not have any peaks and valleys in it. It ought to be a you know you turn in, you turn out, you're going straight, you turn in, you turn out, and in a perfect world, if you had 100% grip on the track and there was no such thing as slip, you know, or, or real, you know, you would just turn in perfectly and turn out perfectly. But it's when you, when you get the spikes and you see the, um, I happen to think that if you start to see big spikes like this, then you know you're doing something a little bit wrong. And I was probably either catching the car here or just doing something, I don't know quite what, but I'm sure I was probably jerking it over to try and to get it to come back across the track or something that I probably shouldn't have been doing because it upsets the vehicle. But those are kind of things you can look at. And if you could also use that in conjunction with throttle, and see what you're doing with the steering and the throttle as well. And of course, you have throttle speed as well to be able to take a look at things there. Um, you can take a look at that as well. So, yeah, I think I think that that uh, gives you a pretty good metric. Sorry, just to just to kind of cut in on you there. The uh, the dead giveaway it looks like on the on that plot graph is the horizontal dots. Is that kind of the dead giveaway that yeah. pushing? Yeah, it, it, okay. it's the, yeah, it's the it's the when you get this S shape. 
okay? And let's just go to the this one left-hand corner here. We'll just zoom in on that guy, okay? You can kind of see how it comes up here, and then it flattens out. And then it okay, comes, and back, and it comes back, out is... and that's where that's where I'm pushing. Yeah, because I'm you know okay. I'm turning coming in here, and 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 you can and you can kind of see it in the lateral G, um, but it's I think it's better represented over here because this is this relationship here I think is harder to see. Um, okay. Yeah, uh, but yeah, but that's exactly what uh, uh, that's exactly what it shows you. And where's lateral G? Letter Excel. Let's shut off the reference for that, so you can kind of see, you know, as I'm, you know, I come in, I'm steering, and it, it, the lateral G stops, and I kind of stop, and I kind of get into here. Lateral G stops, and I keep turning in, keep turning in, and then I start unwinding, and it takes a while for the steering to the lateral G to stop as I'm unwinding. So probably, you know, I probably needed to stop steering right about here or so, <laughs> you know, um, but that's it depends on the on the on the track anyway. But the, yeah, that's kind of the thing. And if this looks like an X, you're in trouble because you've got oversteer and understeer, and something's way wrong. <laughs> um, because again, if if you if you were to get oversteer, you'd still have the same lateral G going in the same direction of the corner, but you'd be all the way over here on the steering, dragging over this on, on this side, and it would come back and, and look like an X. So that's kind of uh, um, how to use that. Um, now, I would recommend there is a great book um, out there, a Practical Guide to Race Car Data Analysis by Bob Knox, and he gets into things about the corner radius, and using that, I think, is a useful thing. Um, I take a look at that um, and learning how to read this. I'm not very um, conversant in it. Um, I should be, but I'm not. I just know it's a. It's for me. This is actually a really useful thing to check how how good is my corner mapping algorithm, and it comes out close sometimes. Sometimes it's awful, um, but it does a, a a decent job being able to look at the the instantaneous corner radius. And what this is is a calculation of as you turn the steering wheel based on the lateral that that and the and the uh, um, amount you've. Uh, of lateral force that you're generated, what is the raci what is the uh, um, what is the radius of the corner that you're going through? What the of the the path that you're driving through? Yeah. And Chris Halliday just asked a question in the chat was so the horizontal dots show the plateau of of the lateral acceleration. Exactly. That's exactly what it shows. And if you keep steering, it's going to keep going out, but you're not going to be generating any more cornering force and you're actually going to start scrubbing speed because you're going to be pushing through that extra steer, and the tire is going to be wanting to go that way, but it's going too fast to, and you're just going to start, you know, you, um, rubbing, scrubbing speed off because of that. So, because you're not getting any more grip out of the deal. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah, we were talking about the options, and just real quick. Um, so the log stuff, the processing mode, if you set it to log and process data outside of a race, um, but only log during a race, the only thing it will do during the race is it will just record the data. It won't process it. It won't do anything to it. Um, the downside of that is you don't get the fast lap reports. Um, the upside is, is it takes a lot less um, processing power to handle it, um, and it's, it's a decent thing uh, to use, and you can have, a, there's a couple of other options you can choose as well. Um, the memory management, um, you'll notice one of the things that will help with memory management, and actually the speed in which it loads, is to um, reduce the number of laps that you're keeping. So if you're the session driver, say only keep five laps, and the session driver means you. Um, you know, whoever's driving that current session um, on, on your computer. And for the other drivers, you know, if you just keep one or two laps, it'll help process that fit, um, faster because it, it, it just helps with the memory management. And you can also reduce the sampling rates at which you're recording the data. You know, um, typically 20 hertz is more than fast enough for most, almost everything. Um, most shock stuff, you want to do it at higher higher sampling rates, but the highest we have is 60 hertz, and even then, I don't think you're going to gain that much more out of it by having it set up to that, but you can if you'd like. Um, and so you can, and you also have a couple of options here to manage the uh, auto merge, uh, whether you want to be able to auto, um, dual auto merge. And what this does is that during the session, if you're in a session and you get back to the garage screen, it will merge the data right then and there so that you could actually get a look at ride heights and stuff in the session. Otherwise, you won't be able to look at them until after the session is over. 
Um, and it will also, of course, if some guys like to keep the iRacing telemetries around so they can use it in other programs or what have you, um, but otherwise we try to delete them so that, you know, why waste the disk space? You've already got that data captured, um, our stuff. Um, everything else here is pretty much the standard stuff. Nothing else has changed. Now, there is one new section that I've just added that's in the pre-release is that there are a couple of folks that are asking for the ability to start iAnalyze Racing in a minimized mode because they have some uh, iris, some software that a lot that based on detecting iRacing running will launch other other applications and so this will give you a way to say hey just only run minimized when you start and so it'll just start and automatically be minimized um, and that's pretty much it I mean that's all I kind of had to go over do you guys have any more questions or um, I, I just have one thing I'd like your I sent you an email on this um, in the um, fuel report there is a section that that uh, I found really useful for running like especially on short oval tracks where you might run be you know it, you can run 20 50 laps real quick uh, because you're only running you know 12 or 15 second laps but I, f I found it a useful idea to to know uh, what the um, average was and the uh, median and the standard deviation and all those things that you have here on this uh, fuel report. Um, let's see, it, is it under the, based on fuel, I, I think, well, it's based on lap time. If you do a whole bunch of laps, it'll give you uh, the average lap time and the mean and median and standard deviations and that stuff, which I, I found really useful. Yeah, it's a, it's pretty darn flexible. I know that. That's the that's the fun bit of it there. So if we come back and take a quick look at the fuel report, and I apologize for my dogs barking, but you can actually get a look at, you know, what the lap time mean is, um, what the average lap time is, um, and, and you can separate and, and actually do the different calculations based on, you know, um, whether you're looking at the fuel or just at the lap time. Uh, it's actually really interesting. I think the, the lap time, you know, especially on short tracks, you expect the faster the lap time to be, the more fuel you're using because you're revving more RPMs. And in general, that's true on the short tracks. What's interesting, when you get to the big tracks of the super speedways, it kind of works the other way around a little bit because if you have a fast lap, you're probably drafting somebody and you're not you're turning as many RPMs because of that. Um, so you actually end up using less fuel. So it adds just another layer of variability uh, when you're when you're looking at things and and planning your pit speed your, your, your pit, pit strategies out what I was interested in is um, that that uh, section there that based on lap time um, takes all of the laps that you've run in a stand or actually I think it takes all of the laps that you've run um, like in a session and what what I was interested in is the ability to select laps, like um, you know I might make uh, changes in the pits, and then see what the mean, the lap time mean would be for those laps that after I've made the change in the garage. All right. Well, actually, Steve, that that that's why we have the pit report now. That's exactly what that will do. So if you oh, okay. Yeah, so you so you so you have exactly that now. So if you go in, you do the you do you do the uh, um, you know you go in, you make some changes, you go run ten laps, you come back in. Okay, what's my average? Am I faster? And you can and you and you should be able to see that straight away with with the new pit report. And that's exactly that's what. That's exactly yeah. what, uh, yeah, and I, I, and I remember your email, and I think that that's what actually uh, prompted me, um, that and a couple other folks asking for, I want to know how long I'm taking in the pits to do stuff, um, and being able to track that kind of stuff, and, and how much fuel I used on this stint compared to last one, and all of that. So that was exactly the, 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 the theory or the thought behind um, using these, the, 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 this particular plot, so. Oh, very good. That's uh, you. You're, you've been very responsive, and I appreciate that very much. 
Oh, it's hey, a great program. I love this program. Oh, thank you. And hey, you know, if you guys have ideas, I mean, that's the whole point. I mean, this is this is it's your tool. It's it it, it it's my project, but your tool. You know what I mean? Uh, or at least that's the way I look at it. I mean, it, I want this to be useful for you. I mean, there are folks that buy it just for the voice commands. That's all they use in it. I mean, talking with Brian. Um, you know, you know, we were just talking with him at the beginning of the session, and uh, you know, there, you know, he likes to use it uh, in large part just because of the fact that it tracks setups for you, so you don't have to worry about you know saving your setups and such. And that's a that's another feature. So, always trying to look to make things to make your iRacing experience better because that's what this tool is designed to do, and that's really what it should do. And Brian, to ask you, answer your question, yes, if you go to the web page, uh, Brian is asking if the pre-release version is available for everybody to download, and right now it is. Um, if you go to the installation page when you log in, let's see here, I wanna go home, and you just go to the install I analyze racing after you've logged in, um, you should be able to download the pre-release, and this should end up, and if you'll notice in the bottom right-hand corner here, um, I'm pointing at it with my finger, which doesn't help you guys at all, but it does say, you know, I analyze racing 1.2.35.0 install, so that's the latest and greatest version, so you should be able to download that and run with it um, right from there. So with that, hey guys, thanks for taking time out of your day. I, I really appreciate it. I mean, if there's ever anything that you need or have questions on, don't be afraid to call or ask. And, you know, certainly, I mean, I think our forums are new and exciting. I'm, I'm you know, glad, Steve. I, I, I was so excited that you posted something there. That was, I wanted to make sure that we'd have the user group meeting right away just so that folks can say, hey, look, he does respond to things. Because there are times that I'm terrible about responding at emails, and sometimes it'll take three or four days for me to get back to someone just because I'm overloaded with too many things going on. Um, but And that's not the best way for me to be. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to be faster all the time. But uh, hey, um, more, than, more, than, more than happy to answer all of your questions and make changes and stuff. But just uh, let me know what's going on if you have any questions or whatever. And um, you know, if and one of the things that I am, am remiss about saying is that if you're interested in m making a presentation, Lloyd, I know I asked you to because I think you'd have an interesting presentation for us. We've had... Uh, uh, um, a, a gentleman make a make a presentation a while back. Uh, his his name's is is escaping me right now. I apologize for that. Um, but I, if you do do that, I give you six months free for I analyze racing. It's a 15, 20 minute presentation, and hopefully it's something that will be useful for other racers to to understand and and, and do that. So you get a reward for for doing that as well. So at any rate. Um, that's that's all I have for today. And so, hey guys, thanks thanks for being here. I really appreciate it. And uh, you know, go fast, get faster. Thanks so much, Doug. Okay. Yeah, okay. thanks, Doug.